Good morning, everyone. We are back in the garden today and we are doing something super exciting. We are planting our potato seeds. So Eric and I harvested our potatoes last year. I believe it was early October and we saved some of those potatoes and we're going to be replanting them now in the spring. We're very excited for doing that this year because it was our first time saving our own potato seeds. So in the past, we haven't had our potatoes make it past the February, March mark, and we are well into May now. So very exciting for us. And the way we were able to achieve that is those potatoes, when we dug them up, we stored them in our root cellar and our root cellar is dark, damp, and cold. So it's the perfect conditions for storing potatoes. They go into kind of like a dormant phase. And then in the spring, we bring them out and we sprout them. So these are some of the potatoes that we've been sprouting. We took them out of our root cellar probably a few weeks back and it took them a while to break out of that dormancy and start showing little sprouts out of their eyes. And once they get to this point, we know that they are good to go and they're gonna grow once we put them in the soil. If you're looking to sprout your own potatoes, it's a fairly simple process. You just have to expose the potatoes themselves to sunlight. The sunlight triggers them to send off those sprouts and they'll start growing and turn into a plant. The other way they are triggered too is by warmth. So we had these down in the root cellar that was really cold all winter and that is why they stayed dormant for so long. But that's also the reason that we are able to plant them now that it's May. We're gonna go ahead and get started right away. We have lots to plant behind me. So these are the potatoes that we're going to be planting today. I already have them organized by variety. And right now is the perfect time to plant these potatoes. I like to plant them when their sprouts are just that long. I don't like to put them in the ground before their eyes sprout just because I want to make sure that they are going to sprout. And I also try to avoid them being too long. And you can definitely plant potatoes when they're too long like this. This is a potato seed we picked up from a nursery earlier in the year and it clearly is further along the process of growing. You can totally plant them when they're like this. You just gotta have to plant them a little bit deeper in the ground. And another thing that's common with planting potatoes is cutting them up. So Eric and I have never done that and we've always had fairly good success with the potatoes. That's why I'm a little hesitant to stray from our routine, but I do see lots of folks cut their seed potatoes. And if you're going to do that, you wanna do it a few days or even a week ahead of time. And you pick a potato, you know, a good sized potato and you cut it either in half or just section it to where you have a few eyes on each piece that you're cutting off, if that makes sense. I definitely think that's a good way to get more bang for your buck but again we just you know we save these potatoes and it's really not a big deal we have extras right now so i'm just going to plant the whole seed and the reason why you want to cut them up ahead of time if you're planting them is you want that area that flesh to heal you want it to kind of get dry before you plant it and that's because potatoes themselves are pretty susceptible to rot we've never had that issue i think if you have good draining soil that won't be a problem And of course it also depends on the time of the year you're planting your potatoes. So we plant ours in the spring and I've made sure that the ground is not frozen. It's not frozen in the rows. At least I know that because I can dig all the way down to them. And the soil is, we have really good draining soil. There's a lot of like mulch in it, bedding from a lot of the aged manure that we get. So really it drains really, really well. So I'm definitely not worried we're gonna lose these to rot. But if you are planting these in like a wet field, definitely that could happen and that's why you usually want to wait until your soil is a little bit you know fluffier or drier or workable is the correct term. I have all the potato varieties we're planting laid out. I believe we have 11 different kinds. We have cow white, French fingerling, Yukon gold, all red, purple majesty, Russian banana, German butterball, cherry red or chieftain, that has a yellow flesh on the inside, but I'm just not sure which variety it is. Then we have purple Viking, mountain rose, and all blue. We're planting about 40 plus potatoes today. I'm guessing it's probably about 20 pounds. That's usually what we like to grow for us to have enough to last through the winter and even the spring months. So right now we still have quite a few potatoes left to eat, but my guess is we're gonna go through them in the next month, which is awesome because I particularly don't 
want potatoes midsummer, you know, when we have salmon and fresh greens and things like that. So it's kind of nice to have a period where we don't have the potatoes and we can eat other foods. And you may be wondering why we grow so many different varieties of potatoes. It's mainly just for fun. Um, we really like growing different kinds. We've probably grown about 40 different kinds in the last few years. And we do have a few favorites, but for the most part, they all have pretty good yields. And there are some differences, not just in the way they cook, but the way they store. Uh, we found that actually all the varieties stored well this year. Generally, purple potatoes have purple flesh on the inside. That's not the case with all of them. We have purple Viking that has a white flesh and a purple skin, but this is purple majesty and purple majesty is absolutely stunning on the inside. It's this gorgeous like galaxy color purple on the inside that I love. But Eric is not too fond of our colorful potatoes because he doesn't find them as appetizing because they are kind of an odd color. So we're growing a lot more of our yellow and gold potatoes this year. I'm, I'm putting a stronger emphasis on those ones like German Butterball and the Yukon Gold. So I'm gonna go ahead and dig some holes. I'm gonna put the potatoes probably six to eight inches down. We're doing the holes about 12 inches apart from each other. I'm kind of staggering them from the left to the right. We have all the holes dug and we're gonna be putting in the potatoes now. And I'm just, again, going about, about six inches in with them. And I just try to have the sprouts facing upwards. Sometimes the sprout will break off. That's not a big deal. They will regrow. And for us, this is about the closest you would want to plant potatoes. Um, they can get a little cramped and you won't get as high of a yield that way, but we found that this worked pretty well last year and when you dig up the one plant you'll probably find some of the other tubers next to that one or they may kind of mingle a little bit. This would be a great candidate for splitting up because it has eyes all over the whole potato so that's a really nice one. We're just going to plant it whole. And we got some massive potatoes last year, but I personally tried to save the smaller ones we're planting. I didn't really want to plant a whole big potato like this. Um, I don't know if it makes much of a difference. I would think a bigger potato would have more energy to produce more potatoes. However, we like to eat the big ones, so I just save the smaller ones for planting. So we are finishing with 44 potatoes total. So at this point we have two options. We can cover up the potatoes as is, or we can add some fertilizer. And I'm going to add fertilizer. I like to use bone meal or fish bone meal is what I have today. And if you're familiar with NPK, bone meal is higher in phosphorus. So that's the middle number. And we've just found that our potatoes yield really good when we put that on. I've never tried it without it. So I'm hesitant to stray from what has worked for us. Um, again, like planting the whole seed potato, we've just always done that. So I'm going to keep doing what we've always done and I'm going to fertilize them with a little bit of bone meal. Sometimes I hear from folks, they tried to grow potatoes and they had a really poor yield. I would pretty much relate that back to the soil, the health of the soil and or did you fertilize them. Um, if you have really good soil, I think we do, it has lots of, you know, aged animal manure in it and it has lots of nutrients, then we really don't probably need the fertilizer. But if you find that you grew potatoes and you just didn't, weren't really happy with the yield or didn't really get very much, try some bone meal um, or fish bone meal. I'm gonna go ahead and put some on all of the potatoes and then get them covered up.
I'm also going to put just a tiny bit of all-purpose fertilizer on this row. And lastly, I'm putting a little bit of the mycorrhiza inoculant. And now I'm just going to cover them up. So these potato sprouts should probably break the soil surface in maybe a week to two weeks and we will let them grow the way they typically do, but we are going to hill them. And I like to mention that I know not everyone hills potatoes. Um, it is thought if you hill them, you'll get more potatoes because you have more length of the plant underneath soil and therefore it can generate more tubers. Um, we've always done it and I, I think it does work. So once they are a certain height, we're going to come along with straw and soil. I like to use both and just kind of hill it up around those leaves. And we'll show you guys that later in the season. Before we jump on to the next project, let's talk about yield. And yield for potatoes, it does vary depending upon your soil, of course, and how loose it is. So the looser the soil is better. Potatoes prefer that kind of soil. It also depends on all the nutrients available in your soil. But for the most part, each potato that you plant is going to give you 10 potatoes back. And we generally get that is sometimes we get more closer to the 15 mark. So that's a pretty good trade-off. One potato turns into 10 to 15. However, if you're planting fingerling varieties, which are the kind that are a little bit smaller and longer, kind of a little narrower, we have Russian banana and French fingerlings. Those give you a lot more, and I highly recommend those, especially if you have a small space. They tend to be late season, so they do take a long time to make their potatoes, but you really get more for the amount of potatoes that you plant. So we have found just one fingerling can give you anywhere from like 50 to like 70 on the higher end. We've had some plants give us 70 or more potatoes from one fingerling potato, which is crazy. I don't even know if that's a normal thing, but we have found that those are really awesome. They're great for storage, great for cooking, and they tend to grow a little bit bigger. At least I found ours do. Last year we had fingerlings end up like this big. I don't know if that's normal, but I always recommend those for people if you're just starting to grow potatoes. Okay, so we're all done. I'm gonna grab some seed and we're gonna hop over to the next row. Okay, so we are moving on to more root crops. It is raining a little bit today, so I have our seed packets in the Ziploc. We're gonna be planting radishes, beets, carrots, turnips, parsnips, and salsify. And salsify is new for us this year, so I am excited about that one. As far as varieties, we have a whole bunch of them, but two that we really like is the candy stripe beets. So we always grow candy stripe beets. They're the ones with the pink and white. They're sweet, but they're also mild too. They don't have a real strong beet flavor. So that's one of Eric's favorite beets. And then we're also growing Chatonnay red cord carrot. This one was outstanding last year. Um, we grew a few different kinds that we really liked, but I would highly recommend this one. This is from Denali Seed Co, but you can find this carrot through many companies. So we're going to go ahead and get started.
right, the last seeds have been sown. We just finished up with our radishes. We planted the beets, the parsnips, carrots, salsify, and some turnips behind me. And I put a light amount of an all-purpose fertilizer on everything that we sowed today. At this point, we have almost finished all of the outdoor planting. I do have to get some squash in a few rows behind me, but that's not gonna be for a little while until we get some warmer weather. You can tell that it's raining now, and I am gonna water the radishes in, but I do think that we're gonna have rain for the next few days. So that's really gonna help us get a head start. Carrot seeds have to stay pretty moist for two weeks until they germinate. So I'm looking forward to the rain helping us out with that. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up out here and thank you guys again for watching. We hope you tune in for more summer gardening videos.